this is going to be a pretty quick video about how to use disk to VHD to make a virtual machine in virtual machine for Hyper-V out of your physical machines operating system disk. So requirements, you need a second drive with enough free disk space to hold your uh, virtualized disk that you create. Um, you need Hyper-V installed on the machine that you're going to run the, vir the new virtual machine on. And you need to download disk to VHD. This, um, we're going to talk mainly about um, converting a GPT partition um, based drive and not a master boot record one. We'll have a separate um, video when we talk about the MBR partitioned drives. So um, first off, we want to run PowerShell as admin to see which type of partition scheme that we're using. So we can go in here and we type in get disk. So we have to run PowerShell as admin. And we can see here under partition style that it says our OS disk is a GPT. So that's what we're going to convert into or make a copy into a virtualized disk. So first thing we have to do is download disk to VHD. Um, I have it downloaded here. So when we do disk to VHD, it's going to create a VHD or a VHDX virtualized disk of this drive or the volume. And if we're, do, if we're using a GPT partition um, or GPT partition based disk, we have to copy the EFI system partition um, in addition to the operating system partition. Um, so the, the EFI system partition, you can call it the ESP partition or ESP volume, is basically what contains the bootloader, bootloader files and all that stuff needed to have Windows boot. Um, this will import as a generation two virtual machine in Hyper-V. So the first thing we have to do is to mount the system partition as a drive letter. So disk two part disk two VHD can see it and we can export it or include it in our image. So we're going to run the command prompt as admin. So just right click command prompt run as admin. And here um, we're just going to mount it to an, a drive letter that's not used. So we're going to type in mount vol. Um, we're going to do it s colon forward slash space forward slash s and this will mount it as the s drive so now our system partition is mounted as the s drive so then we need to run disk to vhd as admin i'm going to run the 64-bit one because i'm on a 64-bit server so here we are going to copy it as new new virtual machine and we only want to check the volumes we want we want to include in the image so C drive no D no E we want S because it's the the system partition it's pretty small and we can see here 21 gigs for C so it's gonna create a VHD or a VHDX file that's 21.92 gigs in size so we have to make sure that the disk that we're saving this to is that big And we want to use VHDX if we want to create a VHDX file. It's a newer format. Um, but if you're going to bring this over into, like, say, VirtualBox or do conversions or some, or yeah, VirtualBox and do conversions of the virtualized disk for that, you won't be able to use VHDX. So you would uncheck this. For us, we're going to go directly into Hyper-V. So we're going to leave that checked. Um, use volume shadow copy basically lets us create a read-only snapshot it uses read-only snapshot of the volumes to create the virtualized disk so we can still be using this server we don't have to worry about running into um, uh, issues with read-only files and stuff like that but if you're using a um, EFI system partition we can't check that so we're going to leave that unchecked so basically if you're doing a if you are using a GPT partition we have to uncheck volume shadow copy. 
it's not a really big deal. You just don't want to sit there and have like a bunch of stuff running on your machine when you're doing this. Um, so you're because it could take a while. So then we want to um, at this point we have where we're going to save it. Then we would hit create. Um, I already did this, so I'm going to pause and we're going to go to uh, the next step. Okay, so depending on the size of your disk, that could take a long time. It could take 30 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, two hours. Um, but here we have our new virtual machine dash GPT VHDX, 24 gigs. So we want to copy that to whatever machine we're going to create the virtual machine on. But first, what I want to do is unmount the system partition from this machine. So I'm going to type mount vol forward slash D then S. Maybe I have to do S colon forward slash D. There we go. So that system partition is no longer mounted. So now we are on the machine that we're going to restore to create the virtual machine on. So this is another machine. Um, this Hyper-V Hyper manager is ran on another machine. If you don't have Hyper-V installed, I'll have an article associated with this video where you can install Hyper-V. Um, but basically you want to run Hyper-V as a administrator. And then we'll come here and then we have I um, already have some virtual machines, but we'll want to go to Actions, New, and Virtual Machine. You generally want to create a backup of that VHDX. I mean, I would, just because it could take a long time to create it, and then if you mess it up, you don't want to have to spend another three hours, two hours, an hour creating it. Um, so here under New Virtual Machine Wizard, we're going to go Next. And we want to name our virtual machine. We're going to do new uh, virtual desktop. We're going to use the defaults. Um, otherwise, you can specify a different directory where it's going to store the actual like virtual machine configuration files, um, checkpoints, that kind of thing. Um, we're just going to keep it there. Since we're using an existing virtual disk, which is the VHD file, um, we don't have to worry about that filling up this folder. Um, but if you create a new virtual machine, you create the virtual disk at that same time, it's going to put it in this folder, a subfolder of this one, but on that drive. So we'll do next. Um, so here we have generation one or generation two. Um, this kind of depends on what you're doing, what operating system you're using, um, the partition style, that kind of thing. So gener generation one is for 32-bit or 64-bit Windows 7 or later. Um, well, that's it. You can use Windows 10 on it, um, I believe, if you have to. But it's if you have an MVR um, partition style, you can use a Generation 1 or a Generation 2. Generation 2 is 64 bit operating systems only, only for Windows 8 or later. And you can use an MVR or a GPT partition style. So for us, we have to use a generation two because we are a GPT partition style and we're doing a UEFI um, based install. So for us, we're going to do a generation two. And I'll post um, probably some links maybe in the future about those differences, but you can Google it and it's basically the same thing. It's just like one and two older versions of Windows, MBR newer versions of Windows for Generation 2 and MBR or GPT. So here, memory, um, we want to specify the the startup memory we allocate to the server. I'm just going to do 6 gigs, um, but it's going to dynamically allocate that memory as it sees fit. So it may not always use 6 gigs. It could use less, but it shouldn't use more than 6 gigs, I believe. So we're going to do 6 just for now. So the network. Um, I have a couple of custom networks in here, like NAT switch and uh, Windows subsystem. But a default install, you should have internal switch or default switch. We're just going to do default switch right now. So here, 
instead of creating a new virtual disk, we want to use an existing virtual disk. So we're going to go and find that virtual disk. And so this is the virtual disk we created with disk2 um, VHD. But next, we're just going to create all the defaults. Finish. And from here, we can hit start. And if and double click on it and connect. And if everything goes OK, we should get a login prompt. So here, we can log in. So this is a virtual machine of the server we just we just used. So this is this machine, but as a virtual machine. So it's a lot easier when you do when you use a GPT partition. In my experience, um, I've done a one with an MBR style partition and the bootloader got messed up and we had to use a Windows image, Windows install disk to fix the bootloader and stuff like that. But I'll probably do another video on how to do that um, just in case anyone runs into it. And so that is it. I mean, this is literally a virtual machine of that same disk. And you can do things like compact the disk if um, you free up a lot of space. So like here it's 96 gigs free, but if you free up space, it's not going to exactly um, free up that space in the virtual disk. So you have to compact the virtual disk and you can do all that through oops, settings under SCSI controller or whatever the controller is. Then you can do edit um, when the virtual machines off and then there's a compact option. Um, but that's pretty much it. Um, a lot of the big issues tend to come up if you're you miss um, the system partitions or you don't mount them and then export them or mount them and include them. You don't mount them and then you don't include them in the VHD file because it's not going to tell you um, what is needed, you'll just go to boot it and it'll say like cannot boot or something like that. But um, sometimes it takes a little bit of experimenting to get that done right and that's why I wanted to do this because it took me a little bit of uh, figuring it out and googling and all of that. But it's pretty easy. This was a Windows 2019 um, physical machine and now it's a virtual machine on another another machine. So you can take your desktop, this should be the same for Windows. Take your Windows 10, take your desktop, make a VHD image out of it, or VHD virtual disk, excuse me, and then make a virtual machine out of it. Um, I find this particularly useful if you wanna make a backup of your machine. You can just kind of create a quick backup of your OS drive or maybe you're getting a new machine and you're not 100% sure you backed up everything. So you make a backup image of your new machine or your, or your current machine, then you get a new machine and then you want to restore your old machine as a virtual machine on your new machine. So you can go back in and grab your settings, bookmarks, pictures, or whatever you may have forgotten. Um, but yeah, it's pretty straightforward. There's ways where you can do this as well through um, Hyper-V. If you're not on the actual physical machine, say you have the disk from the physical machine, you can create a new um, virtual hard disk. And then in the virtual hard disk, you can specify, well, this is going to keep going with this. You can specify the physical disk. And so we can make a inside virtual, inside Hyper-V, we can make a VHD or VHDX virtual disk 
of one of our physical disks. So say, for example, physical drive one is the OS drive from my old machine. I can do this all directly through Hyper-V. Um, and you can create a virtual disk that way. There's ways where you can actually set up a virtual machine to use a physical disk. So you can create a virtual machine that uses your previous machine's physical operating system disk. I haven't done that. Um, I've done this and it worked out pretty well. I didn't have to worry about mounting the system uh, system partitions and stuff like that. It, 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 Hyper-V handled all that just fine. But um, this is how you create a Hyper-V virtual machine from a physical server when the physical server is using a GPT partition. Hopefully this was helpful. Thanks for watching.